Thank you for your interest. I'm excited to share my senior project with you while studying industrial design at Cedarville University. I'll start by sharing a little about myself and how it informed my capstone. My name is Jeremy Hershey, and two of my favorite hobbies are hiking with friends and repairing vehicles. Through projects and adventures, I have learned to work with tools and the importance of safety. Fast forward to this past January, when it came time to choose a capstone, a problem I ran into was having too many ideas. I identified a common theme between my experience and ideas. The goal was to design a user-focused product that can multiply or enhance a user's natural abilities. To measure the project's progress and stay on task, I use the double diamond design thinking method. The first diamond is diverging exploration, gathering insights, and converging ideas to define design goals for the project. The second diamond is diverging ideas, exploring how to meet the goals, and converging on its execution and solution. Dieter Rams is a man who has shaped the industrial design industry, and he based his work on 10 principles. One of the most well-known is good design is as little design as possible. So I had an idea to start as simple and broad as possible, so no solution would be eliminated. I began with the six simplest machines to improve human effort. The oldest simple machine and one I think has greater potential for innovation is the lever. Next, I explored how it has been innovated. One of the first documented uses was by the Egyptians to build the Great Pyramids. Their use of levers was so effective that today, some may suggest that the Egyptians have needed extraterrestrial help. Next, Archimedes quantified how levers work. He said, give me a stick and a place to stand and I will move the world. Last, China is credited with adding a wheel and axle creating the first hand truck as we know it. After exploring the potential of levers to create a mechanical advantage, I used a mind map exercise to figure out today who is using hand trucks, what they are used for, and where people are using them. Developing user personas helped me emphasize and connect with users' pain points. Even though we may not all use a hand truck every day, we are still affected by them. When was the last time that you were in a store with products on the shelves? Or got a package delivered? Hand trucks are an invisible worker used by a variety of industries and users. To set benchmarks for the truck, I researched dimensions and properties of common items so I would have constraints for the hand truck's size and weight capacity. When evaluating hand trucks that are currently on the market based on features they offer, weight capacity, and price, I found a large gap. Trucks at or under $100 are marketed towards consumers, and trucks from $2,000 to $16,000 have more features, but they're heavy duty and out of reach for many consumers and small businesses. Because hand trucks are used in the workplace, there are a few guidelines to consider. The Canadian Center for Occupational Health and Safety was a good resource, as well as our own OSHA agency. New OSHA regulations updated from the 70s, as I've interpreted them, group pallet jacks, loading trucks, and carts into the same category as forklifts. This means that employees now need training to use these carts and employers liabilities are increased. A light duty powered hand truck would be able to bypass regulation and liability but keep the mechanical advantage. There are compelling statistics showing the dangers of repeatedly moving heavy things. Liberty Mutual receives $13.4 billion in claims specifically related to pushing, pulling, holding, and carrying objects and over the 130 million health visits each year for musculoskeletal disorders, the majority are stemming from back issues due to lifting. To show how a hand truck can improve safety, we'll revisit how Archimedes was able to quantify the ability of levers. In this free body diagram, FR represents the reaction force and FE represents the effort force, and the distance is measured from the fulcrum. If the reaction distance is one-fifth of the effort distance, then it would take 100 pounds of effort to move a 500-pound load. Using levers will improve safety. Defining the goals of the project marks the halfway point of the double diamond design process and innovating a lever through the design of a hand truck. From my insights, I wanted to accomplish four things, making high-end features accessible to consumer and commercial markets, adapting the truck to many use cases, adhering to workplace and safety guidelines, and using safety to increase ability. Based on my design goals, I split the user into two categories, consumer and commercial users. One challenge with the general consumer is that they don't typically use a hand truck on a daily basis. The living room furniture can only be arranged in so many ways. 
A way to integrate hand trucks into their routine could be as an outdoor power tool or lawn care device. Commercially, hand trucks can be applied to many industries such as appliance installation, fulfilling warehouse orders, and delivery services, to name a few. Designing the hand truck for a brand introduces the challenge of working within an existing brand language, but it has the advantage of being able to market to a loyal group of users. I decided to design for Lowe's under the brand Ego and Little Giant. Because of the brand's accessibility and trustworthiness, I believe a product by them would be the perfect fit for the market. Ego is an outdoor power tools producer. Making the hand cart electrically powered will incorporate higher end features. They're a good fit because they want to maximize reliability, performance, and ability. Their visual brand language relies on a strong color palette and striking bold angles. They use detailed plastic injection molded parts for touch points using texture to break up the surfaces. Metal parts are used for strength when needed. Little Giant is a commercial supplier of ladders and safety cages. I want to emulate Little Giant's one system that does it all slogan and versatility of their products. Safety, durability, and manufacturing are among their top priorities. Their ladder systems often emphasize function over form. Common materials are extruded metal and fiberglass. To make the hand truck adaptable to a variety of use cases, the design decision was made to make it adjustable. The truck has three main modes. Different configurations and electronic power cuts down on the amount of repeated motions for the user, reducing the risk of musculoskeletal disorders. Standing position performs best while moving small distances and maneuvering in tight spaces. Convertible mode lets the user push the truck longer distances while the handle and wheels support the weight. Wagon mode gives users frequent access to load and unload cargo without bending over. For the project, I studied hand and grip ergonomics. The power grip is the strongest, holding the object with the largest surface area of the hand. The pinch grip has more control and uses the maximum amount of force between the thumb, index, and middle finger. The interior precision grip uses the least amount of force and uses all fingers for precise movements. Each grip allows the user to apply their force in different ways. The power grip allows them to exert the most force in the direction parallel to their forearm. The pinch grip is great for rotating and turning motions, and the interior precision grip is best for fine motor skills. The hand truck demands a variety of motions, from pulling the truck back with the shoulders to operating the controls with the fingers. I want to design a natural, intuitive system with continuity across the range of motion. Based on the hand study, I ID to different motions and controls for the power and speed of the hand truck. Next, I made soldier sketches and an ideation page on the configuration based on repeated shapes from Ego and Little Giant's brand language. To make sure the hand truck would fit within the human scale, I made a cardboard prototype. After making the prototype, I had a better understanding of where the handle should be and how the moving parts interact with each other. Based on the prototype, I was able to ideate different ways the hand truck could transition between modes. To change the angle and height of the handles, I innovated on the little giant's existing ratcheting lever mechanism. Another advantage of having multiple modes and wheels is being able to increase the weight capacity. A mechanical challenge I had was raising and lowering the driving wheels while transitioning into wagon mode. I was able to overcome the issue by using a foot pedal to pivot the wheels around the top mount of the power assembly. Also, the cargo area in the wagon position is designed to be standard dimensions to accommodate storage bins and many common items based on previous insights. The hand truck is a combination of form and function. There are five main touch points that users interact with and can be treated cosmetically. The design decision was made to have small controls that are close to the handlebars to provide maximum stability and power control. The handles have a rubberized texture to separate the surfaces and provide comfort to users. Ergonomic insights also suggested that users prefer having a single vertical grip in the middle to quickly maneuver with one hand in small spaces. Based on a book on human-centered design, the speed controllers on either side roll towards the user to move forward and spring back into a neutral position. The emergency stop switch is only inches away to quickly shut off the hand truck or use it without the power function. Changing between modes, the height and angle of the handles are adjusted. These touch points are designed to be intuitive and familiar to users. Both knobs were based on the earlier hand studies. They should work well with a variety of people with or without gloves. Having a protective case for the battery and electronics fits Ego's visual brand language and makes the hand truck better suited for a variety of jobs by resisting wear and tear as an outdoor power tool or in a commercial warehouse.
Plastic injection molded wheel covers are another way to express the visual brand language. Both sets of wheels and other components fit standard dimensions to make them easier to manufacture and replace. The caster wheel has an extra clip that acts as a signifier. The clip lets the user know the caster wheel is securely locked in the aluminum extruded channel and the cart is in a standing position. The base of the cart was an area identified as needing extra strength. First, because it holds the motor and driving gears. Second, from observing people using hand trucks, they often push the base out with their foot while pulling the handles back, increasing the mechanical advantage. By having a strong cast metal base, I wanted to encourage this behavior. Engineers also play a role in the design process. The shape and profile of parts play a role in its strength and cost as well as appearance. From researching publications from the National Aluminum Association, I wanted to explore if the extruded aluminum profile for the hand truck was a reasonable design. When aluminum is extruded, it can fail in several common ways, in flatness, bending, and twisting. Increasing the wall thickness and rounding the corners at least half of a millimeter prolongs the life of the profile and manufacturing equipment. It also decreases the chances of bending and twisting. The fewer critical dimensions a profile has, the better. Fewer than five, I've found from my research, to be a good number to shoot for. When designing other parts of the hand truck, I also intentionally left room for the extruded aluminum profile to have a tolerance of plus or minus 10% of the wall thickness. Here are some visualization renders for the final solution for a consumer product under the brand Ego. Here is what a commercial product could look like for the brand Little Giant and renderings of it in its main configurations. In conclusion, using the double diamond design process helped me structure the project and link earlier insights to educated design decisions. Through executing the design, my goal was to make high-end features accessible to consumer and commercial markets, make the hand truck adaptable to many use cases, adhere to workplace safety guidelines, and use safety to increase ability. Thank you for the opportunity to share my design process with you. If you have any questions or feedback, I'd like to hear from you through my website or LinkedIn page.